To understand this service we're talking about here, we must first take a step back and check out the entire spectrum of elements required for safe air travel. I must warn you at this point, there are a lot of acronyms and abbreviations coming up. Have your notebooks ready with you. Air traffic controllers work for a company called ANSP, Air Navigation Service Provider. This can be, for example, FAA in the US, NAV Canada in Canada, DFS in Germany, and ATNS in South Africa. As the name implies, ANSPs are responsible for providing air navigation services. This is the top layer in our aviation periodic table, encompassing all the flight safety services provided for the customers, commercial, private, and military in all stages of the flight from flight planning until the aircraft reaches its destination. ANS consists of the following sectors, Communication, Navigation, and Surveillance, CNS, Meteorological Services, Aeronautical Services, AIS, Search and Rescue, SAR, and Air Traffic Management, ATM. If you want to understand these better, subscribe to our channel now. We will be going through the services in detail later on. There are a lot of important elements in all of them, and I cannot emphasize enough the importance of knowing them all. In this video, we will be focusing on air traffic management, where step-by-step step we'll get closer to the service controllers mainly provide daily. Then what is this air traffic management? Put simply, it comprises three main services, Air Traffic Service, ATS, Air Traffic Flow Management, ATFM, and Airspace Management, ASM. A great example of flow management is NMOC, Network Manager Operations Center, a central unit run by Eurocontrol in Europe. They are the big brains behind the slot time allocation. NMOC's purpose is to minimize delays in airway route networks and airports in the European region. In airspace management, you will come across balancing the whole sky between different user groups. Commercial aircraft and private jets are not the only ones using the sky high up on the flight levels. Also, the military has special requirements, and these two don't mix that well. In airspace management, the use of airspace is classified into strategic, pre-tactical, and tactical levels. Some sort of guidelines have been agreed on how each country uses their airspace. That agreement is the basis of everyday tactical allocation between civil and military aviation. In Europe, the management is driven by so-called FUA, Flexible Use of Airspace Concept. On a global level, IKO specifies the guidelines in DOC 9854, Global ATM Operational Concept. Then we have Air Traffic Services, ATS. ATS is a subset of ANS and ATM and refers to services provided to manage aircraft through ATC and other traffic management roles. ATS is critical in ensuring that aircraft are spaced adequately from each other, don't push each other, follow safe and efficient routes, are provided with all the necessary information, and are also being assisted if something goes wrong. Officially, these are Air Traffic Control, ATC, Flight Information Services, FES and Alerting Service, ALRS. The objectives for Air Traffic Services are Prevent collisions between aircraft. Prevent collisions between aircraft on the maneuvering area and obstructions on that area. Expedite and maintain an orderly flow of air traffic. Provide advice and information useful for the safe and efficient conduct of flights. Notify appropriate organizations regarding aircraft in need of search and rescue aid and assist such organizations as required. Although air traffic controllers are responsible for other duties and tasks within this whole ANS network, Air Traffic Control Service, ATC, is always the most important part of our work. Our main purpose for existence is to prevent collisions while expediting the traffic and maintaining an orderly air traffic flow, plain and simple. ATC itself is divided into three main types. Area Control, ACC, is responsible for managing aircraft through larger sections of airspace, typically during the en route phase of flight. Approach Control, APP, handles the transition between en route flying and airport environments, managing aircraft as they begin to descend and line up for landing, and also vice versa, when the traffic takes off and has to be controlled before reaching the en route phase. Tower Control, TWR, is located at airports. Tower control is the companion of approach control. In the tower, there can be many different working positions with different responsibilities. Some may handle only the runway operations, such as takeoffs, landings, and runway crossings. Others may be responsible for maintaining the order on the taxiways so that everyone can maneuver as smoothly as possible to the holding point waiting for takeoff or to the parking bay after landing. 
To ease the burden of these tower controllers, there may be also a clearance delivery position. They are assigning the route clearances to the departing aircraft. Since this may take a couple of seconds longer than other clearances, it makes sense to have somebody do this separately while the aircraft are still parked. Each level of this hierarchy supports the others to ensure cohesive management. For example, ANSPs establish policies and infrastructure that enable ATS to function effectively. They are the owners of Starbucks. ATS the cafe manager through ATC and baristas directly controls traffic and customers, applying the rules and tools provided by the ANSPs. I don't know about you, but explaining this makes me want to have a hot cup of coffee right now. ATC officers or controllers are the personnel who operate within the ANSP's framework. They make real-time decisions to direct aircraft safely based on the overarching policies and regulations established by their ANSP. Air traffic control isn't limited to the skies you can see from your backyard. To understand the alphabet soup, take a look at this table. It is the standard classification of airspace provided by the good old IKO. There you can easily see all the available airspace classes from A to G and under which flight rules you are allowed to fly in them. The service provided section is kind of an airborne menu. It's the list of all the ATS services you as a pilot are eligible to order and receive from that aviation barista. As for the pure air traffic control service, IFR flights are covered in all airspace classes A through E. Think of IFR as the set rules for flying blind, when pilots don't navigate by sight and must rely entirely on instruments. VFR flights. These flights are relying on visual reference when flying, and they are controlled in airspace classes B and C. As you go into the less restricting airspaces, the types of services start to change. Starting from airspace class D, VFR traffic is no longer receiving ATC service. Instead, they are only given traffic information about what's going on around them, and they are themselves responsible of maintaining safe distances. In airspace classes F and G, also the IFR flights are no longer under ATC service. They are only given Air Traffic Advisory Service, ADVS, and Flight Information Service, FIS, for the safe conduct of the flight. This goes hand in hand with the last paragraph of the table. When ATC service is no longer applicable, there are no ATC clearances or permissions required from the controller. If you are flying in EF or G airspace under visual flight rules, you can even choose to ignore all services by turning off your radios. This is completely legal according to the radio communication requirements. ATC issues clearances, which are like permissions or instructions on how and where to fly ensuring safe distances, aka separation, between all flights in classes A and B airspace, where the skies are busiest. The structure is blended and less restricted between IFR and VFR flights in class C and D airspaces. The clearances are still mandatory in these classes, but the VFR flights are given a bit more wiggle room to fly on their own. I hope this flight from A to E didn't make you feel dizzy, but knowing the hierarchy is essential to understanding our job. No worries, you'll definitely pass exams with this knowledge. And while you're at it, check out this video about ESA to understand ATC training a bit more in detail. See you there.